Good evening, everyone, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the first of our expert series of webinars. My name is Elizabeth Ivory, and I hope that you can sit back and relax and enjoy the presentations that we have for you this evening. First up, we have Dr. Alice Darcy from STEAM Education, and Alice is going to run through how to engage fun, accessible, hands-on learning in your everyday science teaching. Then we have Aoife McGrath, an experienced member of our author team, who will take you through the unique features that Folans Explorers has to offer for SESE. I'll give a quick summary on spell it and tip top tables. We'll then have a prize draw. And at the end, we'll have time for any questions that you have. And also joining me for the Q&A is Kira Walsh, a member of our primary commissioning team. So if you do have any questions, just pop them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end of the evening. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Alice. Hi everyone, I'm just gonna test that the slides are working. Uh, wait just one second. Okay, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> um, so first of all, thanks a million to Folans for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. It's a horrible night, so one benefit of technology is we didn't have to leave the house. Um, so I'm going to just give a little, a short talk about, a little bit about myself and why I have any kind of ideas that I think are useful for primary science. A little bit about STEAM Education, which is the company that I run. A little bit about the research behind that. And then a bit about how we actually do it. And we're providing a link to a sample lesson that everyone can test. So rather than me going through different versions of lessons, you can just download it from a link that we'll share and you can try it out in your classrooms. So I'm more kind of focusing on how to think differently about science so that you have more space really in your curriculum to address it. Um, so just a little bit about myself first, I guess uh, I've been the MD of STEAM for about seven years now, but I'm originally an applied ecologist or environmental scientist. Um, However, at the same time as doing the science work, I guess I was in parallel working with children in stop motion animation, doing various um, levels of sustainability education with children, adults and teenagers. So I've kind of, I'm a very mixed bag, I suppose, of experience. Um, I also have qualifications in creative facilitation and art therapy for socio-educational intervention. So I guess what STEAM really did was kind of bring all those things together and give me an opportunity to kind of put that expertise into more holistic programs for children. Um, so I've co-developed and co-taught pretty much all of our STEAM programs. So if you are as yet unaware of STEAM as uh, something that's happening in the world, um, I'm just waiting for my slide to continue. There we go. So STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math. So we've, the company was founded by a team, including myself, um, John O'Halloran, who's president of UCC, Colette Murphy, who's a professor of education in Trinity, uh, Fiona Nocton of the Nocton Foundation, Seamus Devlin was the original founder, and Kevin O'Callaghan, who worked with um, Alca, uh, Lucent Alcatel. So very mixed um, expertise team. And the whole idea was to inspire children at primary level to love STEAM subjects. If you love them, you will continue on trying to seek out opportunities. Um, so just to give you an idea of the scale of what we're doing by the end of this school year, and it's been a terrible one, um, we will have worked with about 15,000 children in about 150 school, primary schools, all upper primary that we deal with at the moment. Um, about 30 companies, more than 150 teachers and STEM professionals. Um, so what is a STEAM approach to education? Well, uh, STEAM is an approach that really emphasizes engaging creativity in and through all subjects. Um, so creativity is not solely attached to the arts. Uh, creativity is engaged in, creativity is important um, part of science as well. Um, we focus on developing critical thinking skills, again, across all subjects. Um, developing connections across curricular and more holistic approach 
Um, it's all designed to be very participatory, very collaborative, lots of hands-on learning by doing, lots of like give it a go. It's not about being tested, it's about um, engaging in the process. Um, we try and make everything very relevant to children, um, to their lives, so they can understand things better. Um, and, and most of all, it's fun. Like children really love doing it. Also, the scientists and engineers and teachers who tend to do our programs tend to love doing it as well. So STEAM kind of originated in the US, but it's been spreading as a sort of a movement and approach to education around the world. We also work with European partners in an Erasmus project um, about improving STEM learning experiences in primary school um, and also uh, working on the area of inclusion, inclusion across age groups, but inclusion across um, diverse cultures as well. Um, so we will be developing some training opportunities there and we will post them on our website if you want to or if you connect to our social media, we'll post them there as well. Um, so how do we engage with schools to teach primary science using creative hands-on approach? Well, our particular model is that we make easily implementable curriculum-linked courses. We call them STEAM in a box um, to help teach kids to think outside of the box. Uh, very cheesy. Um, so these are an example of a few of them. Uh, this year, actually kind of in response to COVID, we developed teacher-led versions. So we have three of those at the moment, um, essentially five pre-made, pre-packed lessons with all of the kit, the digital resources, um, matched to the curriculum of upper primary. Um, so, we're work, we, so we have a lot of those running, well, we will have a lot of those running, assuming the schools open um, this school year, which we have hope. Um, the other section of what we do is working with companies. So we match STEM company, companies and their volunteers with primary teachers to co-teach STEAM and science in a box, engineering in a box, maths in a box, etc. So if you want to know anything more particular about them, you can feel free to contact me. My details will be at the end. Um, but I'm going to move on a little bit now to talk a small bit about the research behind STEAM as an educational approach and how as a teacher you can use it to build and enhance your science teaching opportunities. So um, I think science generally is a very misunderstood field um, in a lot of ways. Uh, people can see it as boring, as very sort of cold, hard, fact-based, distant from people's lives, difficult. Um, from my perspective, all of those things are not accurate as a description. Um, as I said, I'm a very mixed bag, but um, what I think is that if we all try and look at science in a slightly different way. We can make it more open, more fun, more hands-on, participatory, diverse, meaningful, and relevant. And how would we do that? So I'm going to focus for this talk on three elements of STEAM and science. So um, creativity, critical thinking, and connections. <clears throat> now, all three are critical to developing competencies that are required and desired in science careers. But they're also life skills that really should be taught across the board, and I'm sure are in ways taught across the board. Um, definitely relevant in literacy, numeracy, arts, history, geography. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. Uh, so starting with creativity, um, and it's a thing that really uh, breaks my heart is if I hear people, and especially children, saying that they're not creative. Um, everybody is creative because we have creative brains. Um, it's an innate thing in humans that um, needs to be nourished and supported in education. Um, is a nice quote from Jean Piaget that the principal goal of education is to create people who are capable of doing new things, not simply of repeating what other generations have done. The people who are creative, inventive, and discoverers. And uh, Sir Ken Robinson, I'm sure you've probably heard of him, he would say that creativity is now as important in education as literacy. Um, so creativity increases people engagement, helps make learning stick, um, it's fun, and applies across the board. So re this is backed up by research in neuroscience and developmental psychology. So essentially engaging creativity and diverse early experiences is very good for brain development. So Essentially, the more connections that you can make between your neurons 
by exposure to diverse um, activities, skills, uh, experiences and people um, that will really stand to you later in life. Um, and creativity is really important in science. So it's not usually spoken about in these terms, but um, if you think of creativity as the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality, um, every scientific endeavor includes that kind of um, attitude, that kind of mindset. And science intrinsically involves inquiry, invention. It's triggered by curiosity, intuition, and imagination. And these are all really important. So um, I've just put a link there to Creative Little Scientists, which is another EU Erasmus um, project. And that's uh, focused on early years education. So um, it might be useful for the, the small ease teachers. Um, creativity and science resources. Um, so how do we include and highlight more creative hands-on elements in science lessons? Uh, I think an easy place to start is in the observation area. So the scientific method, you know, it's again, it's usually kind of comes across as quite dull, but um, make an observation, ask a question, make a hypothesis, conduct an experiment, draw conclusions and report your results. And I actually think at the younger ages, we probably uh, spend too much time focusing on the kind of experiment end of things. Um, so learning observation skills really well is a key element of science and again, a cross curricular one. So this can include observation skills and developing them are, can easily be implemented all across the curriculum. So you can include any and all of the senses. So it's not just about looking at things. You can use uh, sight, smell, hearing, touch, taste. Uh, we can observe through literacy, like verbal descriptions, writing, poetry, reading stories, writing stories about science or about scientists or about things that happen in life that have all got a scientific element. Uh, we can use observation skills and develop observation skills through drawing, painting, making, modeling, all kinds of actions from as simple as breathing and just really noticing what happens in your body when you breathe to going on nature walks. We can do it through sports. So again, if you really notice what happens when you run, what happens to your heart rate, if you're um, after doing exercise or after meditating maybe, um, we can do it through imagination of activities in different scenarios. So even if you're doing uh, some like tabletop exercises, um, if you just flip the situation and imagine that you're in space or you're underwater or you're you know, in another environment, um, how would that change the way you do it? And how would that change how, what you might observe in doing it? We can also do it through empathy and looking through different perspectives. So if I was a polar bear, what would I be going through right now? Um, and I'll move on to that in a little bit. Um, obviously in science, we use a lot of uh, you know microscopes, different kinds of scanning, equipment, technical equipment, uh, some of which you might have access to, but um, some you don't. However, in this day and age, it's, it's quite easy to get access to a lot of that um, through the internet anyway. So just to take the polar bear example um in our polar bear observations you can actually watch polar bear cam uh, in your classroom so you can have the kids for example watch uh live footage of real polar bears going about their business observe them you can uh, you know build on the observation by drawing be really detailed um making models um, you can dress and act like a polar bear to see how different that um, their body shape and everything would be relative to human movement. Um, you can write poetry about it. So this one is really cute, but really sad. So where did all the snow go? I really want to know. Our planet is becoming too hot, but humans don't seem to care a lot. The snow has melted into the sea, but what about my polar bear friends and me? We still need somewhere to roam, somewhere we can still call home. Have they forgotten I'm a polar bear? Have they forgotten how to share? Some people's rubbish is so very bad, it leaves us bears feeling very sad, which is terrible. Um, but a very good example of somebody observing, a child really observing what's happening in the world and then bringing it down to the level of one species. 
we can watch a tiny bit of polar bear cam there just to see how adorable they are. Um, so that's all easily accessible on the internet. Uh, so I'll just move on there. You can also um, do observation by sound. So again, you can hear, you can easily find on the internet uh, live animal noises, for example, from all different species. Um, you can look at different ways of scanning. So there's a picture of a polar bear in the dark, so the thermal scan. <clears throat> They're really well insulated, so that's why it comes up purple and not um, not glowing red. You can look at, uh, for example, where they live and then link to geography. And there in the bottom right, you can see um, that's a polar bear having a CT scan. So there are links to absolutely everything in the world that are scientific. Um, it's just about creatively finding them, I think. Um, this is going to be what a polar bear sounds like. So if you had like a particularly musical class, you could get them to, um, you know, do a dramatization, uh, pretend to be a polar bear. Um, the next thing, the second point I was going to talk about was uh, cr developing critical thinking skills. So. Again, critical thinking, life skill, uh, not just for science. So the ability to think clearly and rationally, understanding logical connections between ideas. Um, again, it seems very distant sometimes, but if you think about it like this, um, Henry David Thoreau said, think for yourself or others will think for you without thinking of you. So we'll really try to bring home to the children that it, science is not distant. You know, people making decisions about your life that affect your life. Um, that are related to science, it's important that you and they understand the basis of them so you can participate. Um, and really simple, like the fundamental starting point of critical thinking is what children do anyway, which is just ask questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how, etc. cetera. Um, and we find with working with teachers that a lot of teachers are just afraid of not knowing the answers. Um, which I don't blame you if you don't have a lot of science training and you're expected to teach something that is, um, you haven't had a lot of training in. But from a scientist perspective, I would say that that's the starting point that's natural to scientists is we know that we don't have the answers and the whole thing is about trying to find them. So um, making finding them together part of the process um, can be very beneficial. Um, Everyone, and um, including the children, we should encourage to question assumptions. So why do we think the way we think? Question your perspectives. We all have unconscious bias. Um, question your sources of information. And you can involve the children in discussions about, for example, the implications of different scenarios. So um, what if your class was in charge of the vaccination program? How might that work? Um, listening to the children and kind of taking their lead. So sometimes they'll find connections and questions that you would never have thought of but that will possibly lead to a more interesting and relevant conversation. And just giving the time for discussion about science is really important. Um, and then the third thing is connections. <clears throat> connect, connect, connect. So we can connect across curricular skills, we can connect curriculum and topics, and connect other humans. Um, so there's a lot of emphasis lately on you know virtual everything, online learning. Um, but like humans are social learners, so we, we really need to, to um, encourage that. Um, so curriculum connections, I mean, I'm sure I'm preaching to the converters here, but topic webs and mind maps are excellent tools for um, finding your cross-curricular links and then bringing in activities from those other um, subjects. And they can be as simple or as complicated as you like. Um, and you could actually, get the children to do these physically too by assigning people to different um, different subjects or pick two things that are seemingly yeah. random and completely unconnected and try and weave a path between them. Um, so there, and again with my polar bear example, so if you were doing lessons about animals, for example, uh, where do they live? What, where do they sleep? Can they swim? How do they move? Um, you can approach that through literacy, um, you can get children to try and build a polar bear den. Um, if you're talking about um, where they live and migration, you're obviously over into geography. Um, that brought me on a kind of a wiki wander type of a scenario mm -hmm. into ownership. And so who owns the Arctic versus the Antarctic? 
Um, and then the secrets of the ice, yeah. unmelt, unlocking a melting time capsule. You'll quite easily get into history in this kind of a, in this kind of a scenario. Um, but human connections, really human connections. We've all really missed them during the lockdowns. Um, I think we'll never take them so for granted again, but get as many other people involved as you can, I would suggest. So helping, and again, this is a, um, supported by neuroscience and developmental psychology. So brain development, if you help to nurture and create positive, stable relationships with additional role models, and they could be scientists or engineers that are parents in your school or from your community, um, diversifying exposure to different skills, um, allowing people to work in other ways in your classroom is can be really powerful. Um, role play, act, do, so be the scientist. And then, as I said at the beginning, we do a lot of connecting um, STEM companies and bringing in real scientists and engineers into classrooms around the country. So it's absolutely brilliant if you can do that and you can, um, so that um, Mark Jessup there is a friend of mine from, well, he's Australian, but he's from UCC and, there is a little polar bear behind him in the background there. So he's been around the world. So you can actually find lots of people who can, who will help you, who will come into your classroom and the children can ask like questions about the reality of the thing as well as opposed to just the theory. Um, so that was just like a little whistle, whistle stop tour of three of the main things that I think we can really um, enhance science teaching. Um, so the top five tips, I guess I would say, are developing observation skills as these are, it's a, just an easy entry um, to uh, all kinds of subjects um, using all kinds of medium. So be as diverse as you can in that regard. Um, engage creativity. So again, imagination and creativity are not just a nice thing to add to science, they're actually necessary. Um, Think critically, so embrace the questions, bring them to life. Um, you know, with things like role plays, walking debates are brilliant if you've ever done those in the classroom, and, and visitors. And then make connections, so everything and everyone is connected to science because science is the process of understanding. So have a go at connecting them. If you can't find one, that actually might turn into a really interesting puzzle. Um, and really important don't be afraid of not knowing all the answers because nobody does um so just to finish it i'm going to give you a little snippet of um some of the things that we do in classrooms and i'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it now. The sound quality might have been dreadful on that. I'm not sure if it's the, just the internet connection, but that's the sort of thing that we kind of get up to in and encourage in classrooms around the country. Um, so I hope that was in some way useful. And it's very unusual to be talking to a room full of people and not be able to see any of them. So thanks for listening. And sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Um, if you would like to contact us or to download the lesson, um, Elizabeth's going to email it around tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you, Alice. That was great. I can certainly relate to a polar bear. After all, I've been eating in uh, lockdown. But um, I'm going to hand over now to Aoife McGrath, one of the authors of Explorers, who will take you through the skills focused programme that we have with Explorers. Thank you. Thanks a million, Elizabeth. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Aoife McGrath. I'm a full time primary school teacher. I teach second class in the monastery school in Tipperary Town. And I'm so proud to be one of the authors involved in the Folands Explorers SESE programme. So Explorers has everything you need all in one place to bring SESE to life for the pupils in your class. 
with classroom life being so time poor, meaningful integration between history, geography and science is essential to make the most valuable use of the SESE time available. Explorers is a practical program. It's practical for your pupils because they're always engaging in hands-on learning. And it's practical for you, the teacher, because everything you need is in one place and the whole program is highly supported in the teacher's guide. The custom-made age-appropriate digital resources play a meaningful role in the learning. They're not just a little add-on at the end of the lesson. The content is spiralled throughout, so your pupils are organically building on and developing the knowledge and skills they have from year to year. And what I love most about Explorers is the robust content that is fresh and engaging and meaningful and up-to-date for the pupils in your class and the fact that the whole programme is completely rooted in the skills of the primary school SESE curriculum. It's a true SESE programme, so your pupils are always thinking as historians, geographers and scientists. So first, let me talk you through the programme components at each class level. So the junior infant and senior infant programme is a digitally led programme. So there's custom made digital content for every topic you're teaching. So these are things like animated stories, videos, games, and interactive posters. And then the student books support all the digital and hands-on learning. They provide a place for pupils to record their little experiments, investigations, and to reinforce the topics. At first and second class then, we're moving on to a print-led program because the pupils can read better at this age. So we have a set of visually compelling student books that provide opportunity after opportunity for hands-on learning. And then these are supported and enhanced by the digital content, which is once again custom made for this age group. To make integration as seamless as possible, the junior infant to second class programme is organised around 10 themes, as you can see here. So each theme is explored through the lens of history, geography and science. The themes are revisited in the same order each year, always covering new topics, but building on the knowledge and skills the children have learned in previous years. The components then for third to sixth class are slightly different. At this level, we have a combined geography and science book with a separate history book for each class. And of course, the content in these is paired and integrated throughout. And along with that, then we have our supported, supporting digital resources and a set of curated web links for every unit. The teacher's guides give you everything you need to implement this programme in your classroom. So the yearly schemes and the skills overviews are perfect for your planning and if you're developing a whole school plan for SESE. And then the editable unit plans give you all your lesson suggestions for the hands-on learning, the tried and tested web links, the background information for all your lessons. And this is particularly useful, especially for those more tricky science topics in the senior classes. Everything you need is supported. There's Asher links for the junior classes and so much more. So now let me just show you some of the unique features that are in Explorers that you won't find in any other SESE programme. So the digital content at every level plays a meaningful role in the learning and it's been custom made to be age appropriate and age appealing. So first I'm going to show you an animated story from a junior infant geography lesson on the theme of water. I'm Ricky and I'm a raindrop. Come on, it's about to rain. That's why the sky is so dark. It's all the raindrops like me ready to fall. Let's go. Watch out. Roof ahead. Now, down the drain pipe. See you at the bottom. Whee! So my own son is in junior infants, and of course, he loves watching things like Paw Patrol. But since he discovered these Explorers animations, this is what he's regularly looking to watch. So you can imagine how engaging and appealing these will be for the young pupils in your class. From third to sixth class, then, we have a digital stimulus at the start of every lesson. So this is an image up on your interactive whiteboard with a set of 10 accompanying questions. So it's there to set the scene and motivate interest, 
to establish prior knowledge and to get the pupils using their skills right from the outset of the lesson. So the 10 questions are graded from lower to higher order. So that allows you to differentiate accordingly in your class. We've also then created a set of curated web links for every topic that you'll be teaching. What I mean by this is we know there is a huge amount of digital content available online for any topic you would ever possibly want to teach in SESE. The problem is it would take hours to dig through all the content that's out there to find something suitable to link to your lesson. So the good news is myself and the other explorers authors have spent the hours trawling through the internet and we've found the topics and the content that links to the explorers lessons and all you have to do is click on this handy little link. So you'll have things like YouTube videos, diagrams and maps, um, history artifacts and trusted websites then that the pupils can engage in some further learning. One of the things that I am most proud of as an explorer's author is the fact that skills development plays a central role in every lesson. So from junior infants to second class, skills development is built into the tasks and the content that the pupil are engaging with. So even from this young age, they're thinking as historians, geographers and scientists as they're undertaking their little investigations and design and make activities. From third to sixth class then, skills are addressed in a number of ways. So here we're looking at a history unit from fourth class on the Normans. And you can see we've highlighted the two red boxes on the page. So we call these skills stickers and they appear on nearly every page of all the third to sixth class books. So what they are, they're little short, snappy, in context skills activities that make sure the children are actively engaged in what they're reading and not just passively reading along the text. At the end of every unit, then you've got your page of activities. So you've got your fact finding and explore more questions. And then you always have two curriculum based skills activities. So you here you can see we're using evidence and synthesis and communication. So you can be assured that the broad spectrum of curriculum skills is developed in a really balanced manner throughout the programme. And then finally, in addition to the regular unit lessons, in every book from third to sixth class, there are four skills spreads. So these are dealing explicitly with key skills like chronology, evidence, map work and working scientifically. So as well as being used as explicit lessons, these spreads are reference sections, which the pupils can come back to time and time again. When it comes to the content in Explorers, of course, we've included the tried and tested topics that you know and love to teach. But we've taken a really fresh approach to these to give them a new lease of life in your class. And then we've included topics that are brand new and current and relatable to the young pupils we're teaching in 2021. So topics like communication in the digital age, robotics and sustainability are likely not covered in whatever SESE programme you're currently using. Throughout the series, design plays a major role in bringing the content to life for the pupils, whilst ensuring that the pages aren't too text heavy. So in Explorers, everything has a purpose. Each box, each map, each image and piece of artwork has been carefully selected to further pupils' learning, and there are no fillers on any page. So this will really appeal to the visual learners in your class. Another design feature to appeal to your visual learners are the timelines that appear at the start of all the history books and in all the history units from third to sixth class. So here we're highlighting the key information that pupils will be exploring in the lesson, whilst also developing their time and chronology skills in a really visual manner. We know that local studies plays a major role in SESE. So when we were developing Explorers, we made sure that the programme could be local to you wherever you are in Ireland. So from junior infants right up to sixth class, we've picked topics which can be made local to your area. So generic sites like post boxes or grass environments and churches can be found locally all over Ireland. And we also provide lots of lesson suggestions in the teacher's guide to make all the topics local to your area. 
As well as this, we really consciously included examples from all over Ireland. So somewhere in Explorers, there's likely to be a feature local to your county. I'm delighted to be sharing some new features that we're adding to the Explorers programme for 2021. So we've designed digital STEM challenges to allow your pupils from first to sixth class to develop their science, technology, engineering and math skills. So they'll be solving problems like, can you protect an egg from breaking? Can you bring a, build a strong and stable bridge from spaghetti? So the digital challenges appear as a digital display on your interactive whiteboard with all the information that the pupils need. And then there's the option to level up or simplify so you can differentiate within your class or if you're teaching in a multi-grade setting, you can have all your pupils working on the same activity, but at a uh, level that is suited to their ability. And then of course, there's a comprehensive teacher notes to aid you in implementing those lessons. And then secondly, for 2021, we're launching termly digital quizzes. So this provides you with a way of assessing your pupils at the end of every term while they're revising the content in a fun and engaging manner. So just in summary, Explorers is a current, relatable, engaging and robust SESE programme that provides you with the right blend of print and digital content at each class level. It's a really skills focused programme, so you're not bringing another non-fiction literacy text into your class. They're truly working as historians, geographers and scientists. And for you, the teacher, it is practical, it is achievable and it is supported in every way. That's all I have to say about Explorers tonight. Thank you so much, and I'll hand you back over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Aoife. That was really a wonderful presentation. I'm sure you'll all agree that Explorers has lots to offer for SESE. So if you can just bear with me, I'm just going to give you a whistle-stop tour of Spell It and Tip Top Tables. So Spell It is our new spellings programme for first to sixth class. And there's lots of reasons why you love Spell It. First of all, it has the most systematic approach to the teaching of spellings based on phonics and letter patterns. Next of all, we have lots of digital games for all classes to keep the children in your classroom motivated and engaged. And then there's lots of support for differentiation. One of the really important aspects of Spell It is how well planned it is. And you can see that from the table of contents for first class. So the children will progress from short vowel sounds to blends and digraphs, magic E and alternative vowel sounds, and finally diphthongs and or controlled vowels. And this sequence of instruction is what children would normally follow with phonics. Similarly with sixth class, and um, we look at the table of contents for sixth class, you can see that the children are looking at more complex phonic sounds, but then progress to letter patterns, common misspellings, prefixes and suffixes. So this means you have a whole school plan for spellings and you can be assured that it's appropriately leveled and systematically covers all of the phonic sounds and letter patterns. You can also see, looking at these double page spreads from inside the book, that it's visually really appealing and all the activities are many and varied. As you know, the new primary language curriculum specifically states that children need to be able to spell a wide range of high frequency words accurately. Spell it works through the Dolch list of high frequency words and these words are revised year after year so that by the end of sixth class, even your weakest spellers or weakest students will be able to spell the most common 600 words. And there's lots of support for your more proficient students with challenge words in every unit. And two of the unique features that teachers who are already using the programme have found um, very helpful are the words I found difficult pages. These allow children to capture the words that they're really struggling with and use these pages to practice them. And then second of all, we have the My Spelling Record. These are really handy for your weekly spelling tests. 
And we know how difficult it can be to make learning spellings interesting for students. So we've developed digital games for all class levels. And there's a sample of these games up on folands.ie. So you can share these with parents um, helping their children to learn their spellings at home. Um, there are also lots of very useful online printables. So these can be used um, to support differentiation. So the worksheets are printable and allow children to practice what they've learned in a more open-ended and meaningful way. And the printable flashcards are a great support for your weaker spellers. The teacher's guide includes dictation sentences, correct answers for all the activities, and a master list of spellings, which is essentially your school plan. So with spelling, spell it, by the end of the school year, you will have confident, competent spellers. Now let's take a look at tip top tables. Well, first of all, tip top tables has a very modern design with lots of useful features. For instance, at the beginning of each set of tables, there's a top tips page. And this page helps to familiarize children with the rules and language of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Next up, we have a really comprehensive parent section with guidance for parents and how they can help support their children learning their tables. There's lots of ideas for games and these are really helpful to share with parents as well. The Max Facts section is a handy reference with visual supports for the more challenging topics like your fractions, time and shapes. There is an addition grid and a multiplication grid within the book as well. And also with tip top tables, there are printable worksheets for every class and a handy checkup section. And really what this means is that parents won't have to buy a separate practice book. So that's it for tip top tables. And just to say that you can have a closer look for yourself at all the books we've shown you this evening. And we have a sample of digital resources for explorers, spell it and tip top tables up on folands.ie. And also to let you know, we have two more webinars in our expert series. First up, we have a wellbeing webinar, which is focusing on nurturing a sense of wellbeing in challenging times with guest speaker Stella O'Malley. And then a geography webinar, get the most out of an atlas in your lessons with guest speaker, Dr. Susan Pike. And don't forget your local rep can organize samples for you and they're available for calls and video demos at a time that suits you or you and your colleagues. So before we go to the Q&A, we have a small prize draw and we have, sorry, I'm just checking to see if we've, if we've managed to draw from the list of winners. So we have Wendy Nolan, and Wendy will win the luxury food and wine hamper and a class set of explorers. So we'll get in touch with you, Wendy, to organise delivery of that. And Maeve Quinn is our second winner. And Maeve, you win one of our lovely yearbooks and also a class set of explorers as well. So we'll get in touch with you um, over the next couple of days. So we have a couple of questions that have come in already. So if the other panelists want to join me and I'll try and cover some of the questions that have come through. Great. So Alice, there's a one or two questions that were just wondering if the science resources in the boxes are reusable or if they're just a one-off use. They are designed to be semi reusable. So there's obviously some parts of it that you couldn't really use again. Like there, if we use Play-Doh, you can use it, only use it to a certain extent and then, and then it's done. 
Um, but what we have done with those boxes is if you purchase a box or somebody purchases a box for you or your school, we provide the list of how to replace everything you need in the box for a much lower price the following year. So in that way, you can pass them on to different teachers. Also, we're, we're pretty low tech, so we kind of stay away from kind of high end science equipment because it's just not realistic for people. So there tend to be materials that you'd probably have a lot of them in your arts and crafts section anyway. So we've kind of made it so that you can, all the digital part is obviously reusable. Some of the physical part is and the bits that aren't are quite easy to source. Great. Um, this is a question for you, Kara. Um, there's been a couple of questions from teachers already using Explorers and they just wanted to double check when the new STEM challenges will be available. Yep, so there's actually, the great thing is there's some samples already available on folans.ie. So if you go onto the Explorers page there, you can go in and there's one sample for every class um, and you can just work away and use them. And then the rest of them are designed to be ready for next September, but actually we should be able to get them online by May this year. So they'll be ready to go for anyone already using them. They'll just pop up on Poland's online when they log in, they'll see them there. So they don't have to go anywhere new for them or register for them or anything. They'll just pop up when they log in. That's brilliant. Um, and actually, while while you're there, Kira, um, if people are asking if Explorers will be published on Squalga. Yes, this is actually a really common question since we brought the program out. There's been huge interest in um, getting an Osquelga version of it. And it's something we would love to do and we have been looking into since we released Explorers. It has just proved very difficult for us to translate all of the digital resources because so much of it is digital. We Translating the book itself is not so problematic, but uh, getting the animations done and everything with a translation has proved quite difficult. So I can't unfortunately confirm right now if or when that will happen, but we'll make sure to keep everyone updated as, as soon as we know anything about that. Great. And Aoife, there's a couple of questions there looking for advice on teaching a multi-grade class. Yeah, I've had a multi-grade class a few times myself. I've had that awkward second and third mix. Um, so I would generally just choose one pupil book, one level to work from, and then differentiate accordingly within the class. And I suppose Explorers is so visually engaging and the pages aren't too text heavy that it wouldn't overburden a, a level below. Um, the fact that the whole program is spiraled, the pupils are kind of organically have the foundation to build on. There's the STEM challenges coming up that are going to be great for multi-grade. There's the graded questions in the digital stimulus that will be handy for differentiation. Um, there, questions in the activity pages are also greater, there's lower order and higher order. Um, and then you've got the thematic approach in the younger classes that you're following the same theme in every um, age group from juniors to second. So even if you had to do two books, like if you had a junior to second class group, you know, a big multi group, you could follow the same theme with two books, you'd be meeting the same theme at the same time. So it's very doable. Um, as professionals, we're used to differentiating, even if we have a straight class, because there's always such a mixed ability. There's plenty of opportunity for differentiation in Explorers. Thanks, Aoife. Um, another question there is where you can find the accompanying worksheets for tip-top tables. If you um, if you book list the tip-top tables for your class, you will get access to all the worksheets on Folans online. So that's where we keep them. But at the moment, we have a sample of them on folans.ie that is open access for you to try out now or to share if you find it useful um, with parents for remote teaching. And also, there's another question there on, this, on the Spell It games. Um, the Spell It games, there's a few of them also on folans.ie and parents can use them at home if they find it useful. And also, if um, if you're using um, you know one of our books and you share your role number with um, the parents um, of the children in your class, they can also access whatever um, Folan's resources that um, your school has access to, so they can use them on Folan's online as, as well. Um, I'll just check and see if we've any other questions. 
Oh yeah, Kira, there's another question here. Um, is there a list of equipment um, for the science um, lessons with explorers? There is actually, um, it's a little while since I've looked at it, but there is a list at the back of the teacher's guides. So in all of the teacher guides is a list, um, really useful list actually, of all the materials that are handy to have. And it's, there's a real focus in explorers on things being practical. So it's not about going out and having to buy things or trying to, you know, assign your your money for science or whatever to try and pick up things it's like alice was saying there as well for the steam stuff that they do it's things you should already have in your classroom but there's a list there so you can go through in september it's when you're doing your planning and check have you do you have all those things and then along with that there's actually a list of recommended books as well so other story books and picture books um and that you can make available for the kids that go along with the different themes and topics so it's just at the back of the teacher's guide Brilliant. And then I'll just finish up this last question. There's just some questions there about whether people will get a copy of the webinar or the link for the lesson plan from Alice. What we will do is tomorrow or on Monday at the latest, we'll email all of you with a video of this recorded webinar. And also that will include a link to the lesson plan that Alice mentioned earlier on. And, and actually we'll include links to the Explorers digital resource page, tip top tables and spell it on folens.ie so that you can have a really close look at the books for yourself and give the digital resources a try. So I'd like to thank all the panelists this evening and thank you so much Aoife and Alice in particular for your great presentations and thank you everyone for joining us. We know how difficult it is balancing home life and remote teaching. So I hope you found the presentations useful and if you have any questions at all and we haven't got to them today, please reach out to your Folins rep and they'll be able to help you. So thanks a million. Um, so take care everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.